Send into space. Oh, there we go. Okay, so welcome to lesson three, where we look at the unique properties of water. Uh, and water is something that my hope is that everyone ever from like the beginning of your remembering of talking uh, has always said to you to make sure that you're drinking enough water and, and utilizing water correctly in some way, shape, or form. Uh, washing your hands is, seems to be the big one. Uh, and now it is that everyone utilizes water for most or thinks about it. But water is super important for multiple reasons. And, and it's so cool the way that it behaves because ultimately it's something that we really, it's something we take for granted almost. Uh, we don't really think actively about how we use water and how water helps us in our day to day life. But when we think about it and what it's used for, you know, it's, it's about 50 to 90 percent. Uh, uh, water is in our cells. So our cells, depending on the type of cell that it is, anywhere from 50, half of it, to 90% of it is made up out of water. Uh, it's a huge, huge component to life as a whole, and, and we are here today because of the type of water that make up our body and exists on our planet. So, oops, here we go, there we go. So another thing that we need water for, or that we need to consider water for is the diffusion of, of water across a membrane. So movement from things of things across a membrane. So whether it's nutrients, whether it's chemicals, signals, whatever, we'll talk more about that throughout this course, that diffusion across a membrane, the movement of things across a membrane, it needs water on both sides of that membrane in order to happen. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about with regards to it is those biological reactions. Water is such a huge component as a reactant or to dissolve reactants when it comes to thinking about any chemical reaction in biology in some way, shape or form, it will either directly utilize water, it will produce water, or it has used water in some way, shape or form throughout that chemical reaction chain. So water is referred to as what's called the universal solvent. So when we talk about the universal solvent, we think about water as being relatively small, right? Those two hydrogen atoms and that one oxygen atom. And it's quite polar in the sense that they share electrons unequally. And it allows for those things to form hydrogen bonds. So as many of you alluded to with regards to those hydrogen bonds questions, it, it's going to allow for those various unique properties, including its ability to act as what's called a solvent for other polar molecules or ionic compounds. So when you talk about those hydrogen bonds forming, but when you ask those questions about hydrogen bonds forming, we need to think about it in terms of water as a dissolver or a solvent. So those water molecules orient themselves around the atom or around the ions, and that hydration shell forms as a result of water molecules surrounding each ion to form uh, from that ionic compound. So as that salt dissolves in water, right, the, the sodium and chloride disassociate from each other and as their respective ions. And because it's a polar molecule, water can orient itself in different ways to form what's called a hydration shell. And this is something you might have heard, might be hearing for the first time. A hydration shell. And as a result of the charge of that ion or those ions, it can look very different. So there's two things I want to draw attention to here when we look at water as I zoom in here. The first, when we think of water's polar charges, it's very important to recall that the hydrogen will have a slightly positive charge and the water will have a slightly negative charge. I'll use a different color so it stands out. Yeah, there you go. Slightly positive, slightly negative. This allows for those hydrogen bonds to form in super cool ways. So when we look at the hydration shell forming around the positive sodium ion, Okay, that positive sodium ion is going to form those bonds with the more negative oxygen atom in that water molecule. So the water will orient itself so that all of the negative charge things are going to be pointing inward towards that positively charged sodium. Whereas with regards to that positively charged hydrogen, it's going to point out towards well, the rest of that water as a whole. The same thing can be said for chlorine. When chlorine, which is a more negatively charged ion, is surrounded with that hydration shell or those water molecules, the more positively charged hydrogen are facing inward towards that chlorine atom or that chlorine ion, whereas the more negatively charged oxygen are facing outward. And this allows for a lot of cool properties to take place as a result of the nature of hydrogen bonding. 
because it can really, water has that specific capacity to allow for many, many, many molecules, ionic molecules or polar molecules to be dissolved in it because it efficiently uses space. Because in all the spaces around here, right, other molecules can kind of fit in there or other atoms can kind of fit in there. So it's not just a one-off, this one molecule or atom is surrounded by all these water molecules. It's happening in every single pocket or space that is available in that amount of water in that volume. So what we eventually start to see is that aqueous solutions can be formed as a result of these properties. So water can cause, uh, or our aqueous solutions form when that water causes ionic or polar compounds to disassociate or separate or dissolve or whatever you want to call it from each other. And once water molecules surround those ions or molecules, it becomes very difficult for them to reassociate, causing them to stay in the solution. And that leads to those properties that arise from any type of substance dissolved in water. Now, that's a very long-winded way for me to say that hydration shells allow for water properties to take on the things that it's dissolved in it, which is a huge component in biology because as we move through it, you'll start to see that although water has its cool properties, once things start to dissolve in it, that's where the real magic starts to happen. So when we think about the behavior of solutes in water, and we recall that water is polar, and those polar molecules can dissolve in water because they form those hydration bonds or hyd hydrogen bonds and those hydration shells with the water molecule. Nonpolar molecules group together in water because the water molecules that form hydrogen bonds with one another, uh, it won't want to have anything to do with those nonpolar molecules. And that leads to specific qualities called hydrophilic or water loving and hydrophobic or water fearing. In hydrophilic, we're looking at molecules that attract water. They tend to be polar or they tend to be ionic. In most cases, with a few raw exceptions, they will always be polar or ionic hydrophilic or water loving molecules. In hydrophobic or water fearing molecules, as you can tell from the name, those nonpolar molecules, they tend to repel water, okay? And they tend to want to group with each other. Uh, a really good example of that uh, for a hydrophilic is pouring salt into water. You'll see that the salt, for the most part, dissolves with very little interaction needed on your part. Whereas a really good example of hydrophobic or water-fearing molecules is if you put any oil in water. The adage of oil and water mixing, not mixing together, uh, is leading to the idea that it is hydrophobic. The molecules do not want to react or interact with water and they group together instead of forming that solvent or solution. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at with regards to the unique properties of water before I end this lesson uh, is the idea that there are three of them, okay? And I, I can't stress this enough how important this is. Um, I'll, you'll see I start to do this more as we move through each of those lessons. Uh, I probably do it too much, but you'll thank me after you have to write the quiz or do your assignment. Uh, it's very important that you understand and know the unique properties of water. Um, so water clings as a result of cohesion and adhesion. It can absorb huge amounts of thermal energy due to that high specific heat capacity and high specific heat vaporization. And solid water is less dense than liquid water. It can also form those hydrogen bonds as a result of polar or non-polar substances being dissolved in it. And as a result of that, it can take on the properties of that dissolved substance. Okay, so that's it for the morning before lunch lessons. I'll stop recording here. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them now. And uh, yeah.